Hello and welcome once again to the Trailer Fitters Toolbox. Today we're going to have a look at track rod ends. These you'll find on your drag link. This comes from your pitman arm to your uh, steering arm on your swivel. And on the other side you have a track rod and track rod end which you can see is disconnected which uh, keeps the wheels in track. This is on a Defender but it also applies to Range Rovers up to a certain date and discoveries. I would advise if you're working on anything and you have the wheels off a vehicle make sure you have an axle stand underneath your vehicle. Uh, you can see that here highlighted. Ok so track rod ends you can either have with an internal thread like this one which comes off a car, possibly a BMW, and an external thread like this one which we're going to be dealing with because this is what you find on your Land Rover products, Defenders, Range Rovers and Discoveries. Track rod ends they come with two types of thread on them. This is a left hand and a right hand thread respectively. The part numbers are there for them. If you've had experience with your thermo viscous fan you'll realize that it actually winds off the way you should be tightening it up. Now this is a left hand thread. Now you've seen it there should be no excuse to know which way a left hand thread winds off. Generally you'll want the tracking of your Land Rover at parallel which is the two front wheels parallel to each other and the track bar will hold this right. The Defender has a one piece track rod with a left handed thread and a right handed thread respectively on either end. However looking at NRC 4700 which is adjusting shaft for track rod you'll find this on all Discovery vehicles and Range Rovers from 85 to 94. You can see this in the flesh just here. This is off uh, Discovery 1. The clamps on the drag link and on the track rod ends are to clamp the threads together. All right, you can see, possibly see I'm undoing this. This will loosen off the thread so I can then unwind them. And what's handy here is this on the Discovery and the Range Rovers is that you have two right handed threaded track rod ends and this part here has a left handed thread and this is the part that actually adjusts your track which in some cases actually makes it easier you can see I'm winding it out and as I'm winding it out it's pushing the bar out with the Defender you would do this with the, the whole bar rather than just this section and on the track rod this is a right hand thread and you can see the, how the pitch is on this okay so you should have an idea what actually adjusts your tracking and I'd advise if you're doing your track rod ends and you have a Discovery or Range Rovers to make sure that this is free so you can set your tracking. Generally parallel tracking is that from measuring from wheel rim to wheel rim edge from front to back these measurements here shown on the screen should be the same length. Ok for those who need the tutorial on this for removing a track rod end first you need to um, loosen off your pinch clamp and then knock it down the shaft. All right. That way, what you can do then, you have your tube end, which has a split in it. Using something like a vise and a solid part, you have a hammer. I'll just get this a bit further out of the way. And uh, what we're doing here is loosening off the threads. All right. Now, this works, and most people will do it. Don't overdo it. Use WD-40 as well. Once you've knocked it about a bit, that loosens the rust. You can then put it in your voice and hopefully you'll have a better one than this because this one's actually loose on the bench. The best technique and getting more leverage is to use a spanner like this to be able to push the track rod end around and break the rust from the threads. OK so what we'll be using is RTC 5869 track rod end and what I found wonderful about this not only does it have R on it to tell you which thread it has but it also has a grease nipple. If you have a browse on paddock website or the internet you'll find that there are different makes of track rod end with different prices and I found the ones that are the cheapest have the grease nipples. There are two schools of thought when greasing components. Sealed for life units should last for a lifetime. Grease itself could act as a, an abrasive if it has dust in it. However, I would prefer to grease my ball joints, at least then I'm pushing out the moisture and the water that's been taken in while off-roading. Anyway, back to the plot. So the first thing I'm going to do is slur copper slip on this. Reason for this is to stop it seizing in the tube, so later on, when you need to replace it again, 
it won't be so hard to remove. As a rule of thumb, and the easiest way to do it, to get your tracking somewhere near how it used to be, is measure it before you strip it, and get it the same length when you fit it back. Track rod end must have some sort of locking device, and this one has a lock nut for this. You lock it on and it can't turn, the bar can't turn. All right. With our uh, Land Rovers, we have a pinch clamp, which we situate like this, and then tighten the clamp up so the track rod can't move. All right, so the end is not loose in it. I'd always advise to do these up tight after you've fitted it on the vehicle. Part number is 577898 track rod end clamp. Okay, so I'm going to give you a little demonstration here on a steering box. This is off a Land Rover Discovery. I'm going to show you how to remove and fit a castellated nut properly. This is not to be confused with some of the other types of power steering boxes that you get on Defenders and early Range Rovers and early Discoveries. There's actually a kit for it. And the vehicles that have this type of ball joint arrangement is this on the drop arm. There's also a groovy little kit that I think I'm going to invest in next time around for uh, removing and refitting. As you can see it's a bona fide tool. can be done without it but this is quite a good help so we'll see this in a later tutorial. First of all, fit a nut on and this will stop it from dropping out or going crazy anywhere and then using two hammers one as an anvil and one to strike you can whack it and it should drop out all right this is called breaking the taper once that's done you can get your track rod out all right it's the same for your steering yard joints whichever way you do it you are using the hammer as an anvil all right that will shock the taper out on the uh, track rod end itself you can see the taper here and that's the one that you have to break out of the arm. Okay, castellated nut also has a split pin, which is a locator and stops it from going anywhere. You have a hole in your track rod end and you have a washer as well. Vitally important. Now, I've done a tutorial on this before, but basically if you want to remove the split pin itself and it's seized in, use a socket or a spanner and turn it out okay in this case I'm using an air gun just to pull it out and that will just strip it straight out because the metal in the split pin is so soft that won't make much difference that will just add to the threads usually you're just going to be chucking the ball joint away so we can do this if not and you want to use the track rod again just drill the old split pin out you can see the split pin up there on the top there that will be seized solid now refitting the track rod end, okay, securely located into the taper, and then fitting a washer. Don't fit a castellated nut without a washer. If you have a nylock on it, fair enough, all right? But you wanna tighten that up to the torque, which is recommended. I'm using a spanner here and pulling it up. And then you want to line the holes up, all right? To get the split pin in. If you can't get the split pin in, then what you'll need to do is just adjust it slightly so you can, all right? There's your locking device, and that should go very snugly into the uh, castellated part of the nut. You can then turn over the split pin. Uh, I'm using a really bad pair of side cutters here. If you have a sharp pair, that should just nip that straight off, all right? And then knock it over, all right? That's now locked, and that's legal. So there you go, if you uh, go for an MOT and he doesn't see the washer in there and the split pin is not in the right place, then that will fail because this is a locking device. 